Hey everyone, welcome back. Okay, so I've got two patterns cut. It's French terry, hemp, and organic cotton, undyed. And those are behind me on the ironing board. I'm gonna serge those together. I got a five thread serger, and it's an industrial one. So I'm gonna thread that. We're gonna talk about how to thread it, how to fix any messed up uh, seams, um, how to adjust the tension if it's not working right. And then we're going to make our two sweatshirts there that are behind me. We're going to hem them and they will be done and ready for our dyeing process in another consecutive video. So if you like this content, make sure you subscribe and you hit the notification button when I release more sewing and design tutorials. Okay, first we got a thread our machine. So I'm gonna use that's typically serger thread there, comes on a large spool, and we're gonna pull it through, we're gonna attach it to those little threads that are already in the machine. Um, and then we're going, first we're gonna bring it through these holes up here, then through those, wrapping it around, um, those little holes, then I've attached the thread and now I'm pulling it through. So this is if your serger is already um, has been threaded. If it hasn't been threaded, I suggest you look at your manufacturer's booklet. If you don't, they usually are online. I found mine, the one for this machine, online because it's super old. And uh, they also had a little diagram. Now, I'm not walking you through threading a serger. It takes a little bit of practice and it de is dependent on each individual machine. Um, learning about how to adjust tension can be a whole YouTube video in and of itself, I'm not gonna lie. When I, I skipped most of that footage because when I initially put this serger together, I had a lot of issues with the thread snapping. So a fix that I did um, after I, so I basically attach all the threads to the threads in there and now I'm just kind of pulling them through, feeding them through the machine. It's almost like a quicker way of threading your serger. However, I had a lot of difficulty and so what I did was I just loosened the tension on, on everything and then I just started from there and it worked perfectly. So what I found was that my tension was way too tight. So if you find that you're trying to surge and your threads keep snapping, loosen the tension on everything. So turn those little knobs to the left, get it completely loose so you can pull it through freely through the tension, um, whatever spindles. Uh, so you can pull those through very, very easily, then begin to uh, work backwards from there when you're adjusting the tension. It is a whole other video in and of itself. But you can see I've gotten it nice and threaded through. So when you start surging, you want to make sure all the threads are under the foot. So you can see I've slid mine out of the way. All sergers are different. Sometimes they just lift, but this one actually moves completely out of the way. I bring all my thread underneath the plate and I'm ready to go. I skipped all the part where I was uh, extremely frustrated trying to adjust the tension so you guys don't have to sit there and watch that. So we're, we're going to begin by doing the cuffs and the cuff you just fold in half and a little side note about serging is that yes there's a trimmer but that knife there is for threads. It is not to cut any of your fabric. If you're cutting into your fabric, that means you're cutting your seam allowance. A nice thing about sergers is that you don't have to back stitch. So we've done the cuffs, now we're going to move on to the shoulder seams. And when I do the shoulder seams, I work from the outside of the shoulder in towards the neck. And when you're serging, make sure you do not stretch the fabric accidentally. It is very easy to do when you're sewing knits. Allow the serger to pull the fabric through. Do not tug on it and no pinning. You do not want to run over a pin. You'll wreck your knife. So place your hand as I'm doing on one side of the fabric and then just hold the fabric through with your other finger and just let the machine pull the fabric through. It can be a little while to get used to, but that's essentially what you want to uh, do when you are using a serger. 
Um, serging a sweatshirt like this only takes me about a half an hour or less. Most of the time it's putting in the rib, the neckline, that's usually the most time consuming to try and get it right. But I've already done both shoulder seams. So serging goes quite fast and I'm using a five thread serger so the seam is going to be a little wider than a four thread. Um, typically on most knits that you see or that you have in your closet, they're done with a four thread serge. A five thread gives you a chain stitch and that's the only serger I have so I'm just doing it with the chain stitch, no big deal. <coughs> and I've done a little bit of a mistake and I had to seam rip. So what I did was I stitched the fabric on the wrong side. <laughs> yeah, not very fun to do. Um, when you are picking seams, especially serge seams, try not to yank on the thread. You might puncture your knit if it's more delicate. Um, there is sometimes a trick with the serging. I haven't figured it out where you just pull on one end and it comes out. So you have to almost sit there and Pull out the top threads first and then the looped ones. So now that we're ready to go, we are sewing the sleeves on. Now this is a drop shoulder um, sweatshirt I'm doing. So the sleeves are actually, they don't, they have a very, very low arc. And so you can't really tell I'm sewing a sleeve on because it's almost a straight line. Um, when I sew more fitted sleeves you'll see more of a sleeve cap and an arc and I'll have to ease that through the serger so this is just a very simple dropped shoulder sleeve almost like a kimono sleeve so if you're a beginner if you're a beginner serger or if you're beginner uh, using knits or sewing knits um, sometimes doing a drop shoulder is really easy and you don't mess up there's less room for error when you're surging and of course when there's less room for air you don't have to sit there and pick your seam forever you can see as i even with this drop sleeve i i don't pin the sleeve on i ease the sleeve into itself now i've indicated surge uh, points or seam points that I want to match with notches. That's what notches are for. Now we're moving on to the neck band. You want to make sure that the ribbing is equally distributed through the neck. Um, usually the neck at the back is a shorter distance than the neck at the front and so usually what I do is I fold the neckband in half and then I, I bring that half, I cut it in half and then I add a centimeter to one side of that half point and that's where I kind of pin. Another version of this is to fold your sweatshirt so that the shoulder seams are touching pin your neck band to the center front, pin your neck band to the center back, and then lay it out again, and then pin the neck band to the sides. You should see the neck band should be smaller than the neck itself, the neck hole, uh, because you're, we're actually going to be stretching the neck band to fit into our neckline, and that way you get the ribbing laying nice and flat against your neck. If the neckband was the same length as the neck, it would bulge out and it would sit off of your shoulders. Now, not everyone wants that, but maybe sometimes you do. However, for a standard jersey ribbed neck, you wanna make sure it has enough stretch in the band so that it shrinks and it hugs your neck nicely. So you can see I folded the sweatshirt so that the shoulder seams are touching at the neck I pinned the band at the front and I pinned it at the center back. Mm -hmm. 
um, when you're about to surge. I, I do pin the neckband in so it's stabilized. And when we're sewing in our neckband, you sew the, um, you put the fabric in so that the neckband is facing up as it gets fed through the serger. That way you can hold onto it and stretch the neckband as you serge. That's why each pin is really handy. In some patterns, they use notches. And so you have to stretch the ne neckband to match the notch on your neckband. Um, I'm using pins here just so you can see in the video because the notches are a little harder to see. Um, in, as a designer, if I was designing a neckband to go into a sweatshirt, I would mark the, I would indicate the, with notches on the pattern where the shoulder seams are and when the center, where the center front and the center back is, and then I wouldn't need pins sewing. Um, to sew in my neckband, it would be a lot faster. I wouldn't need to pin it in. I could just match up the notches and stretch the neckband and be done with it. Um, a little more advanced trick too is lining up this, the, you, you wanna try your best to line the shoulder seam up with the seam in the neckband as well so that you don't get um, a bulky uh, seam there and the way I do that is I just stretch the two, I stretch the neckband and then place it into the seam at the shoulder so it's a little challenging it's not a fast this is probably the more challenging part of the sweatshirt so take your time here it's not a big deal I do it too you don't want to have to pick the neckband out. It's really frustrating. <laughs> and then we are going to do the side seams now. So um, the side seams are pretty straightforward. You always want to start from the hemline and then work up through the armpit and then towards the cuff. And then we're going to stitch our cuffs in last in the same manner, match up seam to seam, and then Surge. And again, make sure the fabric is nicely fed through the serger. In the past, when I was beginning, sometimes I'd run over um, the sweatshirt underneath and I would cut into my sweatshirt is a disaster so that's the only side note about using a serger is that it does have that knife on it and if you're not careful you could accidentally cut the body of the top or the garment that you're making and then you'll have to cut a whole new pattern and again do not stretch the side allow the machine to feed your fabric through Okay, so adding the cuffs. All right, so we're going to fold the cuffs in half, matching up the seams of the cuff, and then we're going to match the, we're going to line up the seam to the seam in our garment. So that can be a little bulky. So what you do is you have one seam in one direction and the other seam facing the other direction. You stretch the cuff a slight amount, and then you place the edge of the cuff. Once it's stretched out, it's a little easier to line up with the seam. It can be tricky. Um, it's a little bit more advanced, but if you try that method each time, you'll have a really nice seam that lays uh, that has less bulk. If both of your seams are surged in the same direction, you could have a part where it's kind of bulky. So I have them facing alternate directions. It takes a little bit of messing around with, but um, when you're surging your cuff, it's the same. You put the uh, cuff and the sleeve into the machines but the cuff is on top 
so the presser foot of the machine is pressing down on the cuff and then the body or body fabric of the sweater is underneath the feed dog and then getting pumped through. Um, that way you can stretch the cuff a lot easier and you can feed it through as I'm doing here with both hands. Um, I've got a lot of uh, pressure on that foot there so for me it's really easy to stretch the cuff quite a bit and it'll still pull it through. That's the nice thing about industrial um, overlock machines. And I always check to see, I to make sure that I actually sewed the cuff on and all the ribbing points because it's very easy to miss um, for the serger to not catch a layer of fabric and then you think you're finished, you go to flip your shirt inside out and there's a little missed seam. So try and get in the habit of making sure everything's lined up before you serge it through. It's not a big deal to go in again and go over it, but then you just get um, thread bulk happening on your seam and it's just not very pretty. It's not, it's not nice aesthetically. I always take the time to line up the seams the right way. Um, that's just me. I like to have a nice seam. And I, I don't like excess seam bulk or um, seam allowance bulk happening. Okay, so now we're going to press our hem, and the easiest thing to do is to just, as per your pattern, um, just use a ruler and measure the amount of your hem that you're flipping up. In my case, I think it's um, two centimeters. So as I go around, I just use my ruler, measure two centimeters, and and press it down. It's it's pretty easy. Um, it's pretty foolproof. And then we are actually going to use a domestic sewing machine. It has, or just a regular sewing machine that has a zigzag option. So in order to hem a net, you need to do a zigzag pattern, or that's what your zigzag stitch is for on your sewing machine, in case you were wondering. It's for um, stretch. So we're gonna use that uh, zigzag stitch to um, attach our hem. So when you are um, attaching your hem, make sure the zigzag stitch goes right over top of your um, raw edge of your fabric so that we, um, we make sure that we're sewing directly through. So the raw edge of your fabric is in the center of your presser foot and the needle is going side to side, um, left to right over the raw edge and that's going to secure your hem. I always start at the side seam when I'm doing that so you don't notice the back tacking or the, the back stitching. So, finally done, and now for the fun part, we get to try it on. This is always the fun part. <laughs> okay, it's inside out. Where's my backwards tag? There it is. Okay. 
Hope everyone likes it. It's kind of interesting. It's a little higher right here. You can see almost turtleneck-ish, but not quite. And a nice boxy sleeve. It's kind of neat and it's comfortable, especially around the neck. I usually don't. It's like a t-shirt neck, see? A little bit higher. It's cool. Drapes down in the back. Ooh. All right, now we're gonna dye these. It's very exciting. Okay, 